Okay, so have you ever like been singing in the shower trying to hit that high note? Oh yeah. And it's just not happening. Sure. It comes out like more like a squeak than, you know, actual singing. Yeah. Happens to the best of us. <laughs> I've always wondered if there's a way to I don't know, train your voice. Yeah. To hit those really powerful notes. Like right. is it all just raw talent or is there some science behind it? Well, get ready to unlock your inner vocal powerhouse because today's deep dive is all about the fascinating world of resonance and singing. Ooh, I like it. We're taking a deep dive into a paper by Wolfgang Sos. He's a scientist and a musician, which is a really cool combination. Yeah, the best of both worlds. Right. And he's come up with a really interesting way of looking at how we produce vowel sounds when we sing. Okay, so you sent us this paper, Mathematical Formulation of Resonance Points. And... I have to admit, the title, it's a little intimidating. It sounds very official, doesn't it? It does. But the idea that we can actually use math and physics to understand something as artistic as singing, that's really cool to me. It is really cool. And it makes a lot of sense when you think about it. Because yeah. at the end of the day, sound is vibration, right? Right. So tell me what, tell our listeners, what exactly did Socorus discover? I'd love to know. So he essentially created a roadmap for singers. It's a way to visualize and understand how to maximize their vocal resonance, which is like that big, powerful sound that makes your spine tingle. I love that. Yeah. And the really cool part is this isn't just for opera singers or vocal professionals. This has implications for anyone who uses their voice, speech therapists, language learners, even people trying to soften a strong accent. So we're talking about more than just hitting the high notes here. We're talking about unlocking the full potential of our voices, no matter what we use them for. Yes, exactly. Okay. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's back up a bit. What exactly do we mean by resonance when it comes to singing? Okay. So think of it like this. Imagine your vocal tract, like your throat and your mouth, as a landscape with peaks and valleys. Okay. Right. When you sing, your vocal cords vibrate, and those vibrations create sound waves. Those sound waves then travel through your vocal tract. And depending on the shape that you create with your mouth and your throat, certain frequencies get amplified or they resonate. Okay. And these amplified frequencies are what we call formants. So formants are kind of like the acoustic fingerprint of each vowel sound. Yes, exactly. You got it. Shaped by the unique contours of our vocal tracks. Yes. That's fascinating. Yeah. It is fascinating, but how do we actually control these formats? How do we find those sweet spots where our voices truly resonate? That is the million dollar question, isn't it? It is. Tell me. Well, that's where Salos's research comes in. He's identified something he calls, and this is so cool, he calls them harmonic vowels. Ooh, harmonic vowels. Yeah, which are basically vowel sounds where the resonance frequencies, those formants we talked about, align perfectly with the natural harmonics produced by your vocal cords. Harmonics, like musical chords within our voices. Exactly. Huh? Like you have little tiny musicians in there tuning up, creating these beautiful chords. Love that imagery. And when those harmonics line up just right with the resonant frequencies of your vocal tract, you get this incredible amplification of sound. Sound. Think of it like pushing a swing at just the right moment. You get this incredible boost in energy. Momentum. Yes. That's what Savvy is talking about with harmonic vowels. So by hitting these, sorry, harmonic vowels, yeah. singers can essentially like amplify their voices mm -hmm. and create those really, I don't know, awe-inspiring sounds, like the ones that give you chills. Precisely. And what's really groundbreaking about Salas's work is he's gone beyond just identifying these harmonic vowels, right? Okay. He's actually created a visual representation of them, okay. kind of like a sonic map almost. Okay, now you're speaking my language. I'm a very visual learner. Right. So a map, that's helpful. What does it look like? So he calls it the singing phonetics diagram. Okay. And it's essentially, imagine like a matrix, right? where one axis represents the resonant frequencies of your vocal tract. Gotcha. Those formants we talked about. Right. The other axis represents the different harmonics present in the note you're singing. Okay, so depending on the note I'm singing and the, the vowel sound I'm making, this diagram can show me exactly where those, like, resonant sweet spots are. Yes. It's like having a cheat sheet for your voice. I love that, a cheat sheet. Right. The diagram visually highlights those um, harmonic vowel combinations mm. where the formants and the harmonics align for that maximum resonance. That's amazing. So instead of just relying on intuition or or trial and error, yeah, yeah. singers can actually see how to shape their vocal tract 
to hit those like right. really powerful resonance points. Exactly. And here's where it gets even more interesting. So remember how we talked about those formants being like peaks and valleys in your vocal track? Yes. Well, those peaks and valleys actually shift depending on the vowel sound you're making. Right, because the shape of your mouth changes. Exactly. And that's what makes Saucis' diagram so powerful. Okay. He doesn't just show you a static map. Yeah. He shows you how that map changes based on the pitch you're singing and the vowel you're trying to produce. So it's like dynamic. Yes. Like a Google Maps for your voice. Exactly. It's, inc it's like this interactive map that adapts to what you're doing with your voice. Wow. That's blowing my mind a little bit. It's pretty wild. And to illustrate how this works in practice, yeah. Sasis gives a couple of really compelling examples in his paper. Oh, I love a good example. Right. Yeah. Lay it on me. So in one example, he analyzes a singer hitting a D3, okay. which is a relatively low note. Got it. And by plotting it on the diagram, you can actually see all the different harmonic vowel possibilities available to the singer on that particular note. So even on a single note, there are multiple ways to create resonance. Yes. Depending on what which formants you're targeting with your vowel sounds. Exactly. You got it. It's not just about hitting the right pitch. Mm -hmm. It's about hitting the right pitch with the right resonance strategy. And that is what gives a singer control over their vocal color, their timbre. So it's like having a whole palette of vocal colors to choose from, even within a single note. Yeah. That's cool. What about the second example? So the second example is even more revealing. Sauce analyzes a singer hitting a high D5. And what's fascinating here is the diagram shows how certain vowel sounds become almost impossible to fully resonate at higher pitches. That makes sense. I've definitely experienced that as a, well, an enthusiastic shower singer. Some vowels just don't want to happen when you're trying to hit those high notes. It's like those vowels just don't want to resonate at the top of my range. Yeah. So you're saying even, like even the pros... They can't just hit any vowel sound at any pitch and expect it to resonate perfectly. Exactly. There are limitations, right? The higher you go, the trickier it gets. Okay. Some vowels just don't want to resonate as effectively in those upper registers. Right. That's why you'll hear singers often modify their vowels slightly as they go higher. Oh, right. They're making these subtle adjustments to try and find those sweet spots of resonance. Hmm. So it might not even sound exactly like the vowel they're trying to hit, right? Yeah. It might sound a little different to the listener's ear. But it's all in the service of resonance. Ah, that makes sense. So that's why some opera singers, it almost sounds like they're changing the vowels on those really high notes. Exactly. But they're actually, they figured out a way to maintain that, that resonance. Exactly. It's not just about hitting the note, but hitting it with resonance. And yeah. I think that's what makes it so impressive. Yeah. So this diagram, it basically gives singers a visual guide for making those, those tiny little adjustments. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Even if they're doing it kind of intuitively. They can, like, see it and, and try to make those little changes. And Silas's research also hints at some even more, I don't know, advanced techniques for controlling resonance. Okay, like what? Like, for example, he mentions um, overtone singing. Overtone singing, like, yeah. like throat singing, where they make, like, two notes at once. Yes, okay. exactly. It's a really fascinating technique where singers are essentially manipulating their vocal tracks to isolate and amplify specific harmonics. And that creates those like otherworldly sounds almost. Yes. Very ethereal, requires incredible control. Okay, that sounds seriously challenging. Like, is that something that, you know, anyone can learn? Or is it just like those, you know, I think, you know, super talented people? Some people are naturally gifted with that. Right. But it's definitely something that can be developed with practice. Yeah, I... It takes a lot of practice. Okay. Incredibly fine motor control of your vocal tract. Yeah, I can imagine. But according to Suis, practicing overtone singing can actually help singers develop a deeper understanding of resonance in general. So it's almost like, like taking a deep dive, no pun intended, into like the inner workings of your own voice. Exactly. Exactly. And it's not just these ancient techniques that are shedding light on vocal resonance. Technology is playing a role too. Oh, cool. There's software like um, Voce Vista Video, okay. which allows singers to visualize their resonance patterns in real time. Whoa, that's cool. So they can actually see ah. those formants and harmonics we've been talking about like as they're singing. So it's like a like an x-ray of your voice in action. Exactly. Right. So cool. You can see how different vowels, different pitches create different patterns. Yeah. And how like even just tiny adjustments to your mouth, your tongue yeah. can have a huge impact on the sound. That's amazing. So, okay, bringing it back to this deep dive. Yes. It seems like Wolfgang Saus, 
he's given us a really powerful new way of looking at not just how we sing, right, but how we can use science and technology to really unlock the potential of our voices. Absolutely. And I think what's so exciting about his research is that it really emphasizes that we're not stuck with the voice that we're born with. Right. With the right knowledge, the right training, we can all learn to control and shape our resonance, whether we're aiming for, you know, opera stages or simply hoping to, like, project our voices with more confidence when we speak. I love that. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to go practice my what were they called? Harmonic vowels. Yes. Harmonic vowels. Let's do it. Who knows? Maybe you'll hear my Grammy winning performance, you know, sometime soon. Mm, I wouldn't rule it out. The power of resonance. Amazing. Well, this has been so fascinating. And for our listeners, even if you're not planning to quit your day job and join the opera. Right. Just remember that every time you do open your mouth to sing, you are engaging with this incredible science of sound. Yes. And this this amazing instrument, the human voice. It's true. It's a beautiful instrument. 